back with uh, Giselle Bendor. Thank you for your patience with us. No, and by a... Giselle, we talked a bit about uh, your inspirations and role models. And maybe it's time to discuss your fellow compo uh, conductors. So. I, I was fortunate that I uh, lived as a young conductor at a time when Leonard Bernstein was around. Lenny. Lenny, that's right. Uh, and I had ch a chance to work with him as a, as a young uh, conductor, benefit from his coaching and his advice. And he also asked me to accompany him on a tour in Germany uh, at one of the major festivals there that he opened. Uh, so he was a role model. Not the, he was not the only role model, but he was a role model in the sense that his dedication to music uh, was so total that uh, it, it was a matter of life and death to him. It was not a job or a profession. It was his entire life. He took it seriously. It, 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 not only <laughs> seriously, but literally in the sense of what the word maestro means, which means teacher. I remember uh, I was in Germany when he invited me to participate in this festival and there were another four young conductors like me from different countries. He brought uh, young conductors from different countries uh, to work with him. It was like a United, little United Nations there and I was his American representative. And he, we were backstage and uh, in his dressing room he, he was about to conduct the creation by Haydn. This is a mammoth work, very long, and um, very involved uh, uh, piece with, with chorus, with soloists. And he was about to uh, conduct it, to open a new hall in Germany. And then he, sits, he sat at the piano and he said, come here, children. Just like, come children, like, you know, like Mother Goose, you know, a little bit like a big hen collecting mother, us, the young people. Mother Goose of a Jewish mother. Yeah, a Jewish mother, you know, it's absolutely right. And we sat all gathered and he played and sang and whistled and recited the entire work from beginning to end. Genius. Just, but, just to share it with us. He had no obligation to do that. Amazing. And they had to literally pull him out of the chair, throw a jacket on him, and push him on stage. He was there until the very last minute. Amazing. So it was. It is an amazing story because anybody else would have said, "I'm sorry, I need to concentrate. I just, you know, I need some time to study my score, to be on my own." He spent every second sharing the music with us. A teacher, a true a teacher. teacher. A teacher, a teacher in art. And he, he did, well, I could go on, you know, about things that, that he uh, used to say and uh, how he applied the metaphor uh, of being a teacher. He, he applied it also in a Jewish way because he liked the idea that he could have been a rabbi, for example. Maybe he was. In, uh, and he, in, 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 in many in ways. His, in his way. In his own way, he was. He did it his way. Well, yes, he was very inspired. So he was one of the influences. Yeah. When, but when I emigrated to Israel, the person that I was always watching was Yubi Mehta, the conductor. He was the uh, music director of the Israel Philharmonic, still is. And I was uh, going to just about every rehearsal that I could go. So I learned many useful things from him too. Great technique, clarity, uh, and also his sense of humor because he he has a special relationship with the orchestra. Of course. And uh, it's a very healthy relationship. You don't see this uh, around the world. N not a lot. I haven't seen it anywhere else. So that was a different uh, role model in a different sense. Later on, I uh, became a great admirer of Colin, Sir Colin Davis. And what I admired of him is, uh, first of all, what a gentle person as a conductor, a collegial 
conductor uh, he, he is. And, uh, but also with the fact that he was able to achieve maximum effect with minimum effort and with an, a great elegance. And I could apply that to myself. I thought that this was something that I could never be a muscular person like Zubin. I could not do what he does. It's just, maybe, I'm not the right frame. Maybe it's I'm for the not better. The right, no, I, 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 you know, every person is uh, genuinely yeah. what they are. Right. But for me, to have that uh, technique that was both powerful and elegant, that was another role model. And also uh, the fact that he's a very spiritual person. So I could go on and uh, name things that I learned from many conductors, but those are conductors that I work with for long periods of time. And these are all great inspirations, yes. I must yes, say. Yes. So I think, I hope that I learned the best from the best. And added your and added original my, my contribution. My own mistakes to it. Yes. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Giselle, I wanted to ask you, you, we have mentioned it before, you perform quite a lot abroad with yes. many, many orchestras. And also in Israel. Also in Israel, uh, lucky us. And normally you are being uh, presented as an Israeli conductor. So I would like to ask you, how do you view Israeli music? contemporary music, Israeli composers. I'll give you a uh, practical example. Uh, three years ago, I think, I went with the ensemble Meitar, an Israeli a wonderful ensemble, ensemble yes. fantastic yes. ensemble. And we went contemporary to... Music. The contemporary music. The contemporary music. And we went to Vanzi. With Amit Dolberg. That's right. The pianist. That's right. Yes. And they invited me to uh, conduct a piece of uh, music um, in Germany. This was a very special event because it was in Vanzi, in the villa where uh, the final solution was the infamous, decided. The infamous yes. villa. And it was uh, exactly on January twenty-first, uh, which I think was the anniversary of the, that final solution that I had. Uh, been taken in 1942. So we did a concert there of all Jewish and um, Israeli composers at the same room, wow. in the same room where the solution how, how symbolic, was made. How symbolic and how moving. It's a museum today and the entire wall had the portraits of all the Nazis that sat there and Decided, and we played facing them, basically wow. saying, "Here we are. What an Where are you? What an Here we are." Amazing. And the comp the music was all contemporary music, Jewish, Israeli. And, yes, and there was a great variety in that music. Uh, there was music that used folk roots. There was music that uh, was extremely dissonant and. Uh, but you can imagine in a subject like the Holocaust, that music fell in place. It, it made sense. Uh, and there were works for choir, there were uh, works for solo. It was a very eclectic program. So in Israeli music, like in other uh, contemporary music, you have a lot to choose from. By the way, there was a movie made of that uh, concert. A documentary? Yes, it's a documentary. Uh, and I think you, you might want to post. The, yeah, yeah. I, I'll send you a I link. Will, I will look for it. There is a film that has won a uh, few prizes. And uh, the musicians themselves, they speak about what it means wow. for them to be there and to play Israeli music wow. Unbelievable. in that place. Unbelievable. Giselle, what can we wish you? for the future? Well, uh, I, ha I have one dream that I never realized. I never worked in the same place that I lived. 
I've been music director of uh, three orchestras. I uh, was resident conductor of another two orchestras, but I, I was not uh, the music director. And I always had to commute. It, it, always being ferocious commute. For example, from uh, New York to California every month. And I hope one day that uh, I have an orchestra uh, of my own and I can reside in the same place and that it's not too far from my children. <laughs> and grandchildren. <laughs> yes. Grandchildren. So you see, it's a big dream. So we wish you that and much more. Thank you for taking Thank the time. You. Good luck Thank and shalom. You.